Get free tech advice for your business from O2 Gurus. Search O2 Business for more. Hey guys, welcome to BTECT. It's Basil here. Now there's something really special about reviewing a flagship phone. It's the culmination of a manufacturer's entire brand squished into one candy bar package. This time around, it's HTC's turn to prove their point for 2015 with the HTC One M9. HTC's brand is all about design, sound, and sense. Since the One M7, HTC has brought beautiful flagship phones to market. The HTC One M9 looks set to carry that that tradition forward. Starting with the design and it pairs an all metal body with a new edgy aesthetic. It's also incorporating a two tone metal finish which requires an entirely new machining process for smartphones. It's obvious this phone is a nightmare to make. After all, each one is hand polished and requires over 300 steps in the machining process. If you think about how many M9s there are in the world, each one being hand polished is amazing and a little bit crazy at the same time. On top of the two tone silver gold finish. It's also available in gun metal and a silver variant. The gun metal variant feeling much softer and less edgy if indeed you find the M92 sharp. When you look at this you think M8 and we'll totally admit that but when you get it in your hand and feel it you really do think M9. It looks very similar but it feels very very different. Its sharper edges mean that it's easier to hold especially for smaller hands. It also has a bit more of a presence. Now at first it felt a little bit too sharp but after a day or two I got used to it and now I wouldn't go back to the M8 if you paid me. As for what's around the M9, the front has a 5 inch full HD display, an ultra pixel camera and stereo front facing speakers above and below the screen. The buttons are all on the right hand side along with a micro SD card slot. Down at the base is a micro USB connector as well as a 3.5mm headphone jack and up at the top an infrared blaster. On the left hand side you've just got that nano SIM card slot. Because HTC raises a bar so high here I feel justified in nitpicking. The volume rocker and the SIM card tray as well as a micro SD card tray are blasted metal. This is in contrast to the brushed metal sides of the M9. When you have such a fine looking phone these little details just remove from the finesse ever so slightly. Irrespective of this, this is instantly the richest feeling Android phone on the market and its extra presence in the hand over the iPhone 6 for example may make it a lot of people's preference. As for the screen, it's 5 inches with SLCD3 technology. It's full HD resolution as well, giving it a pixel density of 441 pixels per inch. On paper that's identical to the M8, but don't be put off. 441 pixels per inch still delivers imperceptible pixels when you look up close and on top of that it's sharper than the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. Color calibration is cooler than its predecessor and a little bit more true to life too. It also delivers incredible viewing angles, great saturation for an LCD display and a beautiful superficial gapless technology between the screen and the glass that just brings everything up to surface level nicely. Getting into specifics, so try luminous display on the Sony Xperia Z3 and the AMOLED screens on Samsung phones are going to be more punchy in terms of saturation. The AMOLED screens are also going to have deeper blacks, however the HTC One M9 will have more accurate white balance for the most part, putting it on par with the iPhone 6. Ultimately what you get here is a very good screen, even if it isn't a groundbreaking one. For many though, it's what's on the inside that counts, and inside the HTC One M9 it's Sense 7 on top of Android 5.0. This offers the same core interface as its predecessor Sense 6. You've got home screens, you've got blink feed to the left, pull down notifications tray and an applications tray which is vertically scrolling. Running Lollipop you also get lock screen notifications. Now HTC's partnered up with Yelp so your lock screen notifications can even include restaurant recommendations in your area. This is yet to hit the UK, we never saw any in London but if you're in the US you'll see these pop up every now and then. Sense 7 also introduces themes and a new contextual widget. The themes soften the whole feel of the phone, a very welcome addition and they give you a brilliant way to create new ones. Take a picture of something, press the theme button, filter it and you've got a theme. It really is that simple. This is awesome and there are also a whole load of high quality themes HTC provides which tended to be my choice just because a lot of them look super slick. 
As for the contextual widget, this will auto populate itself with applications that you use often. It sits on your home screen by default and has three profiles, home, work, and out and about. So depending on where you are, you'll see the apps you use there on your home screen. This is gonna be perfect for people who never change their home screens. Having said that, you can remove it just like any other widget. Performance was good on the whole in terms of the UI. Sense 7 looks good and it feels smooth. We did get occasional bug outs. There was a low memory warning here and there, occasional stutter until the 1M9 caught up with itself. This was infrequent and starkly opposed to the 99% silky smooth experience we had. Hopefully HTC will iron these out soon, which is more than likely going to be the case. HTC is historically very, very good with bug fixes. As for whether Sense is better than stock Android, for the M9, maybe because it feels so, so cohesive with the long form factor of the phone, the vertical scrolling, the whole UI comes together beautifully. Beautifully. Having said that, it does start to feel very heavy. Samsung's touch whiz was stripped back for the S6 and this was incredibly well received. Perhaps HTC could have done with stripping back a few things for Sense 7 rather than adding to them? Who knows? Hopefully Sense 8 will be a little bit more streamlined. The camera combination is an interesting one. A rear-facing 20 megapixel camera with an f2.2 lens and a front-facing camera ultra pixel camera with an f2 two lens. While the M8 had ultra pixels and duo cameras, the M9 ditches both of them in favor of that high pixel count. It's a shame to see HTC ditch their innovative technologies. And on top of that, it's compounded by the fact that Toshiba sensor doesn't do as good a job as we would have hoped it to do. In great light, the camera captures a good amount of detail, though not enough to warrant the high pixel count and large file size. The lower resolution iPhone 6 and Samsung Galaxy Note 4, for example, deliver much better detail. The M9 does does produce well-saturated, nicely contrasted pictures, better than the M8 in many cases. Of particular note, the HDR mode is fantastic. And of course, the fact you can control full manual settings means you can focus on niggly close-up objects and do cool stuff like light trails. Sadly, drop the lights though, and the M9 is categorically worse than the iPhone 6, the Sony Xperia Z3, the Samsung Galaxy Note 4, and even its predecessor, the HTC One M8. It produces muddy images and even with a flash, it still can't compete, which is a real shame. It isn't all bad news when it comes to the camera though. The front facing ultra pixel camera performs very well. It's the same camera that was found on the back of the M8 and when the lights go down, it actually outperforms the rear camera. The M9 also records 4K video as well as full HD video naturally. The results are decent, fair exposure levels, great amounts of detail, especially in good light. As with photos though, in low light, you can kind of forget about it. Again, a bit of a shame. The effects you can apply to the pictures taken on the M9 are extensive. From cross-processing to overlaying patterns and filters, right through to traditional editing. You really can go to town on this aspect of imaging and it does lend to compensate for the shortcomings of the rear camera. Other multimedia aspects of the M9 are brilliant. The five inch screen looks beautiful, plays back movies to perfection and that is really compounded by those front facing boom sound speakers. You can easily watch a whole movie without headphones. Whack this thing on a boom bass and it's even better. Interestingly the Dolby speakers aren't as deep or bassy if that's the right word for it as the Z3 or the M8. They are however cleaner ideally better suited to classical music or opera, for example. That said, it still does a great job across the board, better than almost every other phone, and we'd only recommend the M8 or Z3 if you listen to a lot of pop or hip hop on your phone. For any gamers out there, between the internal memory, the great screen, and the powerful processor, the M9 will be a dream. Bouts of gaming in excess of half an hour didn't make the phone uncomfortably hot, and of course that octa-core processor just blitzed through every single game that we threw at it. You've also got 32 gigabytes of internal memory as well as micro SD expandability on the M9. HTC also gives you 100 gig of Google Drive storage for two years. So whether it's physical or cloud-based, you'll have plenty of storage the second you pick up a 1M9. As for the power under the hood, it all stems from a Qualcomm Snapdragon 810 processor. 64-bit architecture, eight cores, four of them clocked at two gigahertz, four clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. 
gigahertz as well as three gig of RAM. This is a first for an HTC flagship. Connections include Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.0, 3G obviously, as well as 4G, up to Cat9 in certain regions, but if you're in the UK, it'll be Cat6 and only on EE's network currently. With a 2840 milliamp battery, the M9 has seen a big bump by comparison to its predecessor, the M8 and its 2600 milliamp battery, but don't go expecting the earth here. It lasts for a full working day for me, and I am a power user, but it won't last from wake to sleep, which is a bit of a bugbear for me generally. So while it isn't shocking, it isn't great, and I'd probably say the HTC One M9's battery was the second weakest point behind that rear-facing camera. Ultimately, the HTC One M9 is a beautiful phone in isolation. It's one of the only smartphones that looks as expensive as it feels in the hand, and of course you've got a great set of multimedia features from those boom sound speakers through to that screen and that high powered processor. It really is a crying shame, however, that that camera cannot stand up to the competition though. And with mediocre battery life, the HTC One M9 will forever be a good phone, but unfortunately fails to be a perfect one. As for how much I'd recommend the M9, it will really come down to how much you value design and of course that sound experience. In those respects, the M9 bests the rest. If you want better camera performance, then check out the iPhone 6 or the Samsung Galaxy Note 4. For a much better battery life then look to the iPhone 6 Plus or the Sony Xperia Z3. So that's been my review of the M9. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, make sure that you click that like button. If you like BTECT in general, then subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you want any more information about the M9 or have any questions about it, fire them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching BTECT.